what should I do? It is a question that we ask ourselves many times when we don't know what to do about certain things in life. This was a question that most likely Adam and Eve asked themselves in paradise. It was a question that <clears throat> most likely humanity tried to find an answer to in paradise. Why am I saying this? According to Father Eugene Pentuk, a leading biblical scholar, what the setup of the biblical setup for the first human beings, according to the Bible, was something like this. Three concentric circles with a garden in the center, the Garden of Eden. Now, Eden means bliss or jewelry, but it could also mean step. According to Father Eugene Pentuk, the same word could have a different root from, a, from an Akkadian word that means step. So, a garden in a step in a wilderness in the land of Nod where Cain moved after he departed from God according to the book of Genesis chapter 4. So a garden in a step in a wilderness. And humanity was placed in the garden. In the garden of delight, which they liked it very much. But then God tells them to protect, to work, and to protect the garden. To protect it? From what? <laughs> What's lurking out there in the wilderness? What should we protect the garden from? Now, God tells humanity to stay in communion with him and to work together with him to protect the garden. But humanity chooses to do what? To eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. According to Father Eugene Pentuk, a better translation is the tree of knowledge and control. The devil, the serpent, comes to Eve and tells her, if you eat from this tree, you'll become like God. <laughs> Knowing good and evil, having power and control. Oh, if I eat from this tree, I could control what's lurking outside the garden and protect what I have. I'm starting with this today because we broke the communion with God out of fear. We broke the communion with God because we wanted to have power and control and to protect something that we started to enjoy. Humanity got attached to the goods of the garden. They started to enjoy the garden and they wanted to defend it themselves through their own powers. And this is what fear is about. It is so interesting how meaningful are these Genesis stories. From the beginning, the Bible reveals to us your story and my story. What happened to Adam and Eve happens to us every day. We get attached to people. We get attached to situations. We get attached to comfort. We, we get attached to things. And then we try to do everything that we can not to lose them. And that's the spiritual illness of fear that we are going to talk about today. I want to tell you that according to the teaching of the Orthodox Church, fear was given to us by God. 
fear was instilled in us by God as a way of, first of all, to stay in communion with him. To be afraid not to lose the relationship with him. To, be, to give us that awareness of, I don't want to lose you, and I don't, I don't want to lose the relationship with you. And this is the fear that the Bible speaks about, which is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I know that there is a God. I know that he's in control of everything. And I know that he wants to have a relationship with me, and I don't want to lose that, that relationship with him. That's why God gave us this holy, good fear. Now, a lower level of this fear is the fear of the punishment of God, okay? which is not the healthiest one, but still is helping many people to stay on the right path. It's not the healthiest one, but still, it's still okay. And then there is the unhealthy fear which the devil twisted within us the fear of losing what we have. So what is the healing or what is the church giving us for being healed of this unhealthy fear that so many people, that more and more people experience nowadays? Anxiety, dread, fear is one of the rampant illnesses spiritual and mental illnesses of our society. And this is so because people, if, if we do not know that there is a God who is in control of everything, and then we try to be in control, the next result is fear. <laughs> the next thing we experience is, what should I do to protect what I have? And then we spend billions and billions of dollars on weapons which we never use, just in case, to defend what we have. Because somebody out there might take it from us. So how could we be liberated from this fear and find the peace of God within us? First of all, the church recommends to acknowledge that there is a God. Who is in control? And who will give to us what we need and when we need it. And if he allows some suffering in our life, he allows it for a reason and we should accept it. So to acknowledge that we have a Father in heaven who gives us what we need, as the Lord said so many times. Why do you worry? By the way, the Greek word there for worry in the, in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew, five times the Lord uses the word, why do you worry about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat? Look at the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. Five times he uses the word worry, which in Greek doesn't mean worry. It means why are you broken into pieces? Because that's how we feel when we are afraid and we worry. Broken into pieces. So the first thing is to realign ourselves into communion with God, to get back, back into the perichoresis, into the dance of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to acknowledge Him that He is leading the dance, not me. I am to work together with God to be in the dance with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but not to lead the dance. The second recommendation is to detach ourselves from the pleasures and possessions and the prestige of the world. To understand that what we have is not really ours, it was given to us, and it was given as a garden to Adam and Eve in paradise. It was just given to us. And if the Lord decides to take something away from us, so be it. I'm not attached to it. Detachment. 
And the most important one, once again, is union and communion with God. That's what God intended for humanity from the beginning. To work together with God, to protect the garden, but in communion with God. This is why the church recommends when for whatever reason the diabolos try to instill that fear in us and to break us into pieces, to open up to God and to allow him to come within us and to take control of our life. This is why the church recommends to pray the Jesus prayer when we experience this fear and brokenness. To stand still and to know that he is God and to invoke his name and to allow him to come within us and to give us his peace. Psalm 23 so beautifully expresses that even if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. And this is why in the end, my cup runs over. <laughs> even if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, if you are within me and my cup is filled with your grace, my cup runs over and your grace from within me will give hope even to fearful people around me. And then we can go to the valley of the shadow of death. I'm going to close today with, we started with the example of humanity that didn't know to work together with God to be healed of fear. And as a consequence, um, we broke the relationship with God and St. John the Evangelist tells us that perfect love casts out fear. When we are in a perfect, loving relationship with God, when He really dwells within us, when we have the perfect love of God within us, that casts out any kind of fear. And I'm going to end with the example of a saint of the church who by the grace of God knew to open himself fully and completely to God and to really have God dwell within him and not to be afraid of anything. St. John Chrysostom, after being a priest in, in Antioch, he was called to be the bishop, the archbishop of Constantinople in the early 400s. He was a great preacher and the man of God. And because he, did, he really tried to live himself a godly life, as St. Paul says, all those who try to live a godly life will suffer persecution. Guess what? He had to suffer persecution because the empress who loved luxury and her big palace and her very, very fine clothes could not stand the sermons of St. John Chrysostom about helping the poor. So he got into a conflict, he got himself into a conflict unwillingly with the empress. And the empress, Evdokia, tells John Chrysostom <clears throat> that she's going to banish him from the empire and from the capital city of Constantinople. St. John Chrysostom answers, answers her, you cannot banish me for this world is my father's house. But I will kill you, the empress tells him. No, you cannot, for my life is hid with Christ in God. I will take away your treasures. No, you cannot, for my treasure is in heaven and my heart is there. But I will drive you away from your friends and, and you will have no one left. No, you cannot, for I have a friend in heaven from whom you cannot separate me I defy you, for there is nothing you can do to harm me. This is how St. John Chrysostom answered to the Empress, <laughs> the second most powerful, and maybe the most powerful because her husband was really, you know, being manipulated by her, 
maybe the most powerful person in the empire at the time. It is true that St. John Chrysostom ended up having to go into an exile and he died while being marched into this exile. But if we look in our pews, until today, we celebrate the holy liturgy that was put under his name. Indeed, the empress couldn't take anything from him because God was within him. And this is how he overcame the fear that the empress and the devil was trying to instill in him. And this is how we could overcome fear, by having the perfect love, the perfect relationship with God, by having him dwell within us and work within us and in our life.